The 777X was supposed to be Boeing's comeback, but the program was just hit with yet another blow and this time it pushes its already massive problems into even darker territory. The total losses have now exceeded $15 billion. 26 aircraft sit in storage at Seattle Payne Field waiting for a certification that keeps slipping further away. And now a new complication has emerged, raising questions no one at Boeing seems ready to answer. The Boeing 777X was introduced in November 2013 at the Dubai Air Show as the successor to the highly successful 777 family. Boeing designed it to become the world's largest and most efficient twin-engine jet. It features composite wings with a 71.8-meter wingspan, the longest of any commercial aircraft. It carries the GE-9X engines, the biggest turbofan engines ever fitted to a civilian airliner. The cabin can accommodate up to 426 passengers. List prices range from $410 million to $442 million. The aircraft was supposed to enter service in 2020. That did not happen. Certification efforts began in September 2019 but halted almost immediately. During an extreme pressurization test conducted in the hangar under FAA oversight, an aircraft door blew off. Boeing paused testing, investigated and had to reinforce the structure. Test flights eventually started in January 2020. They were suspended again in December due to flight control system flaws. A 2020 uncommanded pitch event during testing increased FAA scrutiny and pushed delivery estimates toward 2023. A 2022 reassessment shifted entry into service to 2025. Boeing paused much of the 777X production line through 2022 and 2023, incurring approximately $1.5 billion in added costs. In August 2024, Boeing discovered another problem. Engineers found damage in the thrust link, a component connecting the GE-9X engine to the wing structure. The issue was first spotted on test aircraft WH-003 after a flight in Hawaii. A post-flight airframe inspection revealed cracks in a primary pylon structural component. Boeing grounded the entire test fleet and ordered inspections of all test aircraft. Similar issues appeared on two other planes. Flight testing was suspended for five months. Boeing redesigned the thrust links and resumed testing in January 2025. By late August 2025, five test aircraft had accumulated 4,100 flight hours across extreme conditions in Arizona heat and Alaska snow. The 777X test program has completed over 1,400 flights. Boeing conducted more than 4,000 flight test hours, more than twice the hours of a typical certification program. It was not enough. In September 2025, CEO Kelly Ortberg confirmed at a Morgan Stanley conference that the certification process was falling behind schedule. He stated there was a mountain of work remaining to complete the process. He noted that no new technical problems had been found, but even a minor schedule delay on the 777 program has significant financial impact. In October 2025, Boeing announced the first delivery would not happen until 2027, pushing back the timeline by another full year. The company took a $4.9 billion charge in its third quarter results. Boeing posted an adjusted loss of $7.47 per share for the quarter compared to analysts' expectations of a $4.59 loss. The charge brought total program losses to over $15 billion. Richard Abulafia, Managing Director of Aerodynamic Advisory, said the charge was more than the $2 billion to $4 billion he expected. While he does not expect the charge to be financially crippling to Boeing, he stated it raises questions about any more surprises to come. The airlines are feeling the impact. Emirates is the largest customer for the 777X, with 270 aircraft on order. Emirates President Tim Clark said he planned a serious conversation with Boeing as he failed to see Boeing providing a meaningful forecasted delivery date. The airline had expected its first 777 by the end of 2025 and had already prepared interiors and cabin fittings. Emirates is now investing $5 billion to retrofit older aircraft and extend their operational life. It has also ordered 65 Airbus a35900 as a temporary measure to maintain capacity until the 777X arrives. Qatar Airways has 124 aircraft on order. Lufthansa was supposed to be the launch customer, receiving the first aircraft. 
That delivery has now been pushed to 2027. The German airline cannot include the 7779 in its flight schedules until then. Other key customers include British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Etihad Airways, Singapore Airlines and All Nippon Airways. Boeing removed 33 777X orders from its books in October 2025 after shifting them into an accounting category linked to certification delays and shifting delivery timelines. The 777X backlog dropped to 473 jets. The FAA has tightened its oversight since the 737 MAX crashes that killed 346 people. Certification requirements have become more demanding. The folding wingtips are a completely new feature for airliners. The FAA issued special conditions requiring Boeing to prove the tips stay locked in 65 knot gusts, prove crosswind handling works with tips raised, and prove all failure modes would be benign. Brake certification tests in Oklahoma took 63 days, more than double the original forecast, and required 117 new wheels for hard braking scenarios. Future testing includes simulating ice formations on wings and evaluating braking on wet runways. Airbus is taking advantage of Boeing's delays. The A350-1000 continues gaining traction, with airlines accelerating orders to fill wide-body shortages. Airbus has raised its maximum capacity to 480 seats and is studying a stretched A350-2000. Qantas selected the A350-1000 for Project Sunrise, while Air Europa signed an OMOU for 40 A350-900s at the 2025 Dubai Air Show. Etihad added seven A350-1000s to its backlog. Boeing still secured major business. Emirates ordered 65 more 777-9s worth $38 billion, raising its 777X backlog to 270 aircraft. Boeing now holds 565 total 777X orders from 12 customers, with first delivery targeted for 2027. But the 777X is seven years late and has accumulated $15 to $17 billion in losses. 26 aircraft are built, four in testing, and 22 stored in Seattle. FAA oversight remains heavy as Boeing increases testing through 2026. With wide body supply critically tight, the 777X remains Boeing's key recovery program if it stays on track. announcement in Dubai just turned the aviation world upside down. Air Canada unveiled a strategy so unexpected that even insiders didn't see it coming. With global demand exploding and international routes shifting fast, this move could change everything from fleet planning to cargo flows. The question now is simple. Why did Air Canada do it now? Canada confirmed an extension of its strategic partnership with Emirates through December 2032. The reciprocal code share and loyalty link agreement marks one of the most substantial long-term commitments in Canadian aviation history. The original partnership launched in 2022 and data shows more than 550,000 passengers have already utilized the 56 code share routes connecting Canada, the United States, Dubai and destinations beyond during the past three years. The extension locks in operational collaboration for seven additional years, providing travelers with expanded access to Emirates' extensive network across the Middle East, Africa and Asia. The Emirates partnership delivers tangible benefits through integrated booking systems and coordinated schedules. Passengers can now book seamless connections between Air Canada's domestic Canadian network and Emirates' global routes through a single reservation. Aeroplan members earn and redeem points on eligible Emirates flights, while Emirates Skywards members gain reciprocal privileges on Air Canada services. The code share covers 56 routes, creating connectivity options that didn't exist before 2022. 
Air Canada simultaneously revealed it is reinstating its code share agreement with Air India pending regulatory approval. The revived partnership takes effect December 2, 2025. This marks a significant reversal after the previous code share arrangement ended. Air India operates extensive services across the Indian subcontinent, connecting major cities including Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru and Hyderabad. The restored partnership addresses growing travel demand between Canada and South Asia, a corridor that has seen consistent passenger growth in recent years. The Air India code share extends beyond passenger services. Air Canada specifically highlighted improved cargo connectivity between Canada and South Asia as a core objective. Trade volumes between Canada and India have increased substantially, with bilateral merchandise trade reaching $13.3 billion in 2023, according to Statistics Canada. The code share arrangement facilitates freight movement through coordinated scheduling and streamlined logistics operations. Air Canada operates daily non-stop service between Toronto and Delhi, along with multiple weekly flights connecting Vancouver to Delhi. The Air India partnership adds connectivity to cities across India that Air Canada doesn't serve directly. Passengers can book through tickets combining Air Canada's Trans-Pacific routes with Air India's domestic network, reducing connection times and simplifying travel logistics. The strategic timing of these announcements reflects broader trends in global aviation. International passenger traffic continues recovering from pandemic-era disruptions with demand for long-haul travel approaching pre-2020 levels. The International Air Transport Association reported that international revenue passenger kilometres for September 2024 reached 99.6% of September 2019 levels. Airlines are responding by expanding partnership networks rather than launching new routes, which requires substantial capital investment and regulatory approval. Air Canada's approach centres on network density through partnerships rather than organic expansion. The Emirates and Air India code shares provide access to over 100 additional destinations without requiring Air Canada to deploy aircraft or crew to new markets. This model reduces financial risk while expanding revenue opportunities through ticket sales and loyalty program engagement. The Emirates partnership proves particularly valuable for cargo operations. Dubai serves as a major global logistics hub, connecting trade flows between Asia, Africa and Europe. Air Canada Cargo can now offer shippers coordinated connections through Dubai to markets across the Emirates network. The partnership includes provisions for interlining cargo shipments, allowing seamless transfer of freight between Air Canada and Emirates aircraft. Recent financial results underscore Air Canada's recovery trajectory. The airline reported third quarter 2024 operating revenues of $6.11 billion, representing a 4% increase compared to the same period in 2023. Operating income reached $1.38 billion for the quarter. Full-year guidance projects adjusted EBITDA between $4.9 billion and $5.1 billion. The airline has reduced net debt by $2.6 billion since the end of 2022. Air Canada operates a fleet of 294 mainline aircraft serving 51 Canadian cities and 51 international destinations. The airline carried 51.9 million passengers in 2023. Fleet modernization continues with delivery of Boeing 787 Dreamliners and Airbus A220 aircraft, which offer improved fuel efficiency and lower operating costs compared to older generation models. The airline has firm orders for 57 additional aircraft scheduled for delivery through 2028. The partnership expansions position Air Canada to capture growing demand across key international markets. South Asia represents one of the fastest growing travel corridors for Canadian airlines, driven by immigration patterns and business travel. The Middle East serves as a strategic connection point for passengers traveling between North America and destinations throughout Asia and Africa. These announcements deliver concrete infrastructure supporting that growth trajectory.